the government knew. They knew from the very beginning. They, they, were, they were storing, they were stockpiling. Preppers, we, we had no idea. We were, we were prepping medicine, food. We had no idea we were prepping all the wrong things. When the shit hit the fan, it, it was only a matter of hours before it, it occurred to us. It dawned on us. Our priorities, they were all screwed up. We had no idea there was this one thing, this one prep we should have prepped. The government was stockpiling it. No preppers stockpiled it. And it killed billions, billions of people died. They didn't prepare this one critical item. It was this one weird life hack. If only we thought about it, if only we had the insight ahead of time to have prepped it, we would have stockpiled mountains of it, mountains of it, but none of us, none of us stockpiled any of it. The one thing no one prepared, salad dressing. Everybody, this is Praxis, and yes, in this video we are talking about salad dressing. Now, salad dressing may not seem like it's on the same level as beans, bullets, and band-aids, and all those types of things you usually associate with general emergency preparedness, but it is an important item, and I'll to explain to you why that is. Right now, at the time of this recording, we're almost into the spring. Uh, we've only got a couple of weeks left until spring, and first thing in spring, one of the great things I always look forward to is wild edible plants. Now, wild edible plants are a great way of kind of appreciating your natural landscape around you. Whenever I take a hike through the woods, I always like to kind of, you know, note where they all are. It's like, oh, I know you, I know you, I might nibble here and there. If you start doing this yourself, you're going to want to avoid nibbling right on the sides of the trail at dog level, if you know what I'm saying. You want to grab stuff that's a little bit, you know, further into the woods, it doesn't necessarily have dog piss all over it. But it's a great way of kind of, uh, you know, uh, developing a relationship and an appreciation for the na uh, nature and the natural world around you. In an emergency situation, having access to wild edible plants can be, you know, potentially a lifesaver. So uh, it has a lot of, you know, applications in, you know, normal life or crazy life or emergency life or whatever. Uh, so I've always been a big fan of it. Uh, and if you've ever eaten a lot of wild edible plants, you might notice that a lot of them don't taste all that great. You know, you pick uh, some kind of a wild edible whatever, it's not like eating a fresh apple most of the time. You know, there are there are a lot of ones that are kind of a neat little treat, but a lot of wild edible plants, it's just, it's nutrition, it's roughage, it's some calories here, uh, there, but it's not like, oh, it's a fresh summer watermelon that I just found growing, you know, rogue off in the woods somewhere. It's not that kind of stuff. So to improve the flavor, if you're going to be eating a lot of that kind of stuff in an emergency situation, stocking up on salad dressing can be a really great way of being able to capitalize on that resource in a way that, you know, honestly doesn't make you throw up. You know, we know that People's stomachs, if you kind of are having the same thing over and over again and you're not really all that crazy about it, you can develop sort of a revulsion to it after a while and you don't want to be like vomiting up the food that you just spent all this time kind of, you know, harvesting and gathering uh, just because it tastes so awful. So if you can stockpile a lot of this stuff, it can go a really long way to help with that. And also, if you're doing trapping of wild animals is like a way of getting an emergency food supply, you know, not all animals are as delicious as others. Uh, I... I'm a, a pretty much a vegetarian. I eat a little bit of animal here and there, mostly a vegetarian. I've done an awful lot of butchering of roadkill and animals that I've seen die, like not old roadkill, but stuff that I just saw. Uh, I witnessed the, the animal being struck or I see a bird fly into a wall and I'm like, well, that's a perfectly good blue jay right there. You know, so I have butchered a lot of animals and eaten a lot of them. And, uh, you know, having a little bit of marinade can go a long way for things like that. Now, I mentioned that this stuff is a great thing to prep. One thing that is very similar to this that is not a great thing to prep is olive oil. I have a lot of olive oil. It's all, all right in this area. I've got like six or seven of these containers, but if you keep too many of these, they can go rancid. I've had a lot of experience where I bought that, you know, I just bought too much and it ended up going rancid in the end. Even if you have your pantry cool and dry, you know, the stuff only lasts so long. So that might lead you to believe that it, uh, a dressing like this, it has a lot of olive oil at the top. And then the, you know, the, actually, woo. Which one, right? Yeah, the oil, oil rises to the top. Uh, so the olive oil at the top, and there's like vinegars and other um, uh, seasoning, uh, seasonings at the bottom. You might think, well, that's probably going to go rancid as well. It doesn't. And you know why? If you do, tell me in the comments below, because I honestly don't. I just know that it doesn't tend to. Now, I'm talking in this video about uh, specifically vinaigrettes, Italian dressings, Greek dressings, things of that nature. I'm not talking about like the creamy Italians, the Thousand Islands that have like mayonnaise and stuff like that. I don't have a lot of experience with those because I 
I don't eat them. Uh, but these types of things, simple oil vinegar kind of dressings, they seem to last a long time. I don't know if it's because of the uh, presence of the vinegar or the salt or the seasonings in there, whatever it might be. You are able to prep and uh, stock a lot of those and they last several years. I've never had any problems with spoilage, even with these things, uh, you know, uh, being on my shelf for several years. So if you were thinking about, you know, different types of things uh, that, to put in your pantry, I know uh, a lot of us, if we've already got the beans, we've already got the rice, but if you're trying to think of those kind of last minute things you wouldn't want to be without in a pinch, salad dressing, I think is a really great add on that can just make it so that, you know, whatever you're eating can taste a little better. You're not going to get that revulsion kind of thing. You're not going to be throwing it up and even forget about the throw up thing. Why not enjoy your life? And instead of going out and being like, oh, I'm eating these wild dandelion greens, you know, to, to keep from dying, why not be like, oh, this actually tastes pretty good. That's it. If you have any kind of thoughts on things that are, you know, great add-ons that help to take, you know, the standard kind of prepper food and make it that much more palatable and that much more useful, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments below. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.